Hello, Elizabeth Boland. Hello, Rosas. So I guess we're looking at some kind of a clear cutting stand here. Yeah. And then the older forest is around it. Yeah. And what do you have to share in terms of yeah. your wisdom? So actually, in, the old, in nowadays, if you yeah. would come and you would thin this out, yes. you do it with big machines. Yes. The machines compact the soil. Yes. So if you take one tree, the tree yes. next to it, yes gets its roots compacted yes and then it gets vulnerable to root rot yes in the old days you came with a horse you know yeah. you were a few people yeah it was colder the ground was frozen yeah so you didn't do the same amount of damage yeah but nowadays you have heavy machines and the w ground is less frozen because winters are warmer yeah exactly so, so, so then you do yes. a lot of compaction yes. and damaging of the roots yeah the and it, then trees. it becomes very difficult confounded problem are the are the forest grazing cows causing the root rot or are your machinery that you've introduced actually causing root rot, right? Yep. That's a controlled trial yep. uh, to actually, uh, you know, clarify law. Yep. So the other main point is if we do uh, intensive continuous forestry with uh, appropriate robotic swarms for intensification and profitability, then we also have to make sure that these robotic uh, uh, swarms have a very light footprint, right? Exactly. So and I've seen some that. innovative companies that have flying yep. chainsaws and stuff like that. Yep. But one could also imagine like insect uh, and other animal inspired monkey and other animal inspired robotics yep. to actually go and carefully take down a tree in such a way so that the soil compactions are very, yep. very light. If they don't weigh more than a horse, they're not going to make much damage. Exactly. Precisely.